Hey guys, it is NCSFan001 here for another one of those weekly trophy list update videos. Today's date is Monday, July 18th, 2022. So this will have covered the week of July 11th through the 17th of 2022. It was a reasonably productive week overall. I made some decent progress. I mean, I got a couple of Platinums and I started off a new game. I will go ahead and say that yes, this was this week was the 12 year anniversary of the YouTube channel and I pretty much didn't even acknowledge it because in all honesty I've just been really really busy with work stuff recently and it's definitely it's definitely positive so it's definitely going in like a good way because getting cer certain recognition and everything so I like the way things are going but I just kind of blanked out and forgot about the YouTube anniversary because of that so I feel kind of sad that I forgot about it but we can make up for it on the next time I live stream which unfortunately may not even be this week because of uh, some stuff that I'm gonna be busy with this next weekend We'll see, though. I don't know yet if it's going to happen, but we'll see. So anyway, the progress I made this week was on a total of three different games. So first off, we finished the Platinum Trophy in Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep, a one-shot Wonderlands adventure, or a Wonderlands one-shot adventure, whatever it's called. So for this Platinum Trophy, it's not particularly hard, but and it took me about two weeks to get, as you guys can see, because I think that was my first trophy. So it took me about two weeks to get the Platinum. It's not a particularly hard Platinum by any means, but it is kind of annoying. It's definitely one of my least favorite Borderlands Platinums because they took a DLC, and it was a very good DLC from Borderlands 2, one of the best from Borderlands 2, and made it into its own individual game. And unfortunately, they didn't translate certain things over well, such as leveling up and some of the challenges and stuff like that. So, for example, you have to complete the first level of all the challenges in the game. Some of them are very easy, but some of them are much more obnoxious because they require you to have specific weapons and specific play styles, as well as specific shields and grenades and stuff like that. They can sometimes be random and they may, they may just like not want to appear for you. You have to kill each type of enemy a certain number of times, which isn't too hard. I mean, the challenges overall, they aren't really that hard, but again, some of it comes down to luck of getting certain items that you need to be able to complete some of the challenges. Now, I will say I also was saved quite a bit of time on this Platinum because Ghost was nice enough to power level me. He power leveled my Gunzerker and my Assassin up to their necessary ranks for their trophies. And he also power leveled my main character, Axed in the Commando. He's the one with the Saber Turret. He powered him up to like 19, so that was able to save me probably a few hours of grinding at the end. So you would reach level 10 by the time you finish the main story your first playthrough. Because keep in mind, this is not a particularly long story. Like, the actual story of this is probably only going to set you back about 4 hours. It's not that long. And then along with that, you have a bunch of side missions that are going to add in quite a few more hours. But even by the time you finish all the side missions and everything in your first playthrough, you're probably going to be around 15 to 18, I would think. Maybe 20, I don't entirely know. But getting to 25 is going to require a full true Vault Hunter mode playthrough, which is going to add in, you know, more time. I mean, you'll get to 25 at least by the time you finish that, which is good. But level 35, there's absolutely no way you're getting to 35 in two playthroughs without extra XP farming. Which is what I ended up having to do. Basically, I just kept farming Murderland's Temple on true Vault Hunter mode. And I was able to level up relatively fast from that. It only added on probably a few hours. But, I mean, it's just, it was hours that didn't need to be there. And it would have taken even longer had I been, you know, a lower level going into it. So, it's really stupid that they made you go all the way to 35. Level 30 would have been perfectly sufficient. Even level 25 would have been perfectly sufficient. They could have had a 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Or 5, 10, 15, and 25 or something. That would have been perfectly fine and it wouldn't have been a problem at all. You have to get purple rarity gear or better in every slot, which is a pretty typical Borderlands trophy. So for this one, if you don't have this by the time you finished, you know, your playthroughs and such, just go hit the Ludapult a few times and you should end up getting it because you should have more than enough Iridian to do it. Like the weapons are really easy to come by because you can purchase some 
from the crystal merchant if you don't manage to find any throughout the course of your playthrough which you should be able to find weapons they're not really that hard it's just the i mean the grenades aren't terrible either it's more like the class mod and the relic and the artifact or whatever the other three categories are that are a little bit less common uh, another place you can farm it is with the raid boss if you're playing it especially on regular mode because they're a lot easier to kill that way so then you have to get 100 kills with the Saber Turret, that's Axton's ability, that's extremely easy because the Saber Turret's one of the better special abilities. You have to phase lock 100 enemies, I don't think you actually have to kill them while they're phase locked, you just have to phase lock them, and I think it has to be 100 separate enemies, but it, you might be able to do the same one a couple of times. So that's for the Siren class, that's fairly easy, you can do both of these from the very beginning. For Gunzerker, you have to be at least a level 11 to have purchased all of the necessary skills for him. So that's basically a full another playthrough there if no one power levels you. Or, I mean, it's not quite a full playthrough, but it's definitely quite a bit more effort if you don't have anyone power leveling you. As for the actual action of doing it for 90 seconds, it's not too difficult. You can do it on the beaches if you're quick about it, but there are probably other places that are better. I bet it would be a lot easier if you were in any of the areas with a lot of spiders. I don't know about the mines necessarily, but probably in the section with all of the spiders that is... Uh, where is that? It's Maybe it was in the forest? I don't really remember. There was a place with just ridiculous numbers of like spiders and stuff. Oh no, it was the, it was the next area after that before you go off to the final battle. You have to kill a chubby. This is a horrible trophy. This should not have been in the game in this fashion. There's only one type of chubby in this whole game, and it is the chubby skeleton. And they are an insanely rare spawn in this game. It is just ridiculous how rare they are. Like, they just do not spawn in this. They're not, I don't think they're quite to Jimmy Jenkins level random. But it is pretty rare to get a chubby. Now, I was lucky enough to get it within a few hours of farming, which during that time I was going for challenges anyway, so I was already focused on those anyway. So it wasn't necessarily that bad for me, but there are other people out there who will go over 20 hours of farming without seeing a chubby, which is just insane. If you're going to make this a trophy, at least make it a little bit reasonable to obtain and not take, you know, 20 or 30 hours because that's just honestly insane. No one wants to do that with this game because there's just not enough content to justify it. You have to redeem 25 badass tokens, which is pretty much unmissable. You have to remain in Zero's Deception mode for 10 seconds straight. This requires you to be a level 15 with your assassin. So for this one, the best thing to do would be, if you don't get a power level, the best thing to do would be to use Zero probably as your main character. Just because you would level up a lot more often during that first playthrough because of that. Then you have to complete the side mission, shoot this guy in the face. I think that was actually added in to this game because it was a thing in the OG Borderlands 2 in the base game. So I think this was actually added in as new content. But it's an extremely easy side mission that you'll come across toward the end. And you do have to complete all of the 29 side missions anyway. Unlock 10 customization items is pretty much unmissable. You have to revive someone from Fight for Your Life that is on your friends list. So this is the only true multiplayer trophy. Some of the challenges will require another player, but you can do those online or in split screen. It doesn't matter. But for this particular trophy, you do need to have an online friend to get this one with. You have to purchase five items from the black market, which is pretty easy. You'll have more than enough iridium to do it. I managed to purchase actually everything. Complete all of the side missions, which like I said, there's about 29 of them. Most of them are pretty short and easy. A few of them are a little bit longer, including completing everything in Murderland's Temple with several side missions. And you have to beat the raid boss. That's a side mission. You get three story-related trophies here for finishing the main story, so nothing too difficult there. Just finish the main story and you'll get those three trophies. For this one, you must feed the Noble Queen three times. Upon completing the main story, she will appear in Flame Rock Refuge, and you must feed her Iridium three times in a single visit. At least you get some gear out of it. Then this is an area-specific trophy. It's in, I want to say, Hatred Shadow. It's just, it's like a cave and eyes show up in the cave and you have to kill it. 
and you get the trophy. It's pretty easy. Then you have to get five swords out of the Immortal Skeletors without leaving an area. The best place to do this is during the boss fight against its like four gigantic skeletons. That's a really good place to do this because you will constantly get the Immortal ones. There's other places you can do it, but that is by far the most convenient and easiest. You have to complete the most challenging round of Murderlin's Temple, which is not too hard on the regular difficulty, especially once you play True Vault Hunter mode enough, because there's six rounds, so five normal plus the badass round. Then you have to wield the Mysterious Amulet, which is tied to a side quest. This is the only missable trophy in this game. It can be missed because there's a couple different ways that quest can go, and one of them can result in not getting the amulet. But if you do screw that up, you just need to have someone that you can invite to the game that's willing to let you wear the amulet for a few seconds to pop the trophy. So you don't actually have to do it specifically from the side quest. As long as someone has the amulet and lets you use it for a second, you can get the trophy. You have to demonstrate your skill or lack thereof by rolling a magical dice. That means either roll a 1 or a 20. This is pretty easy. Just keep rolling dice throughout the game and you'll eventually get this. There's a ton of chests right after you beat the raid boss. Speaking of that, you do have to beat the raid boss, the dragons. There's like four of them. It's certainly not the hardest raid boss in the franchise, especially once you're fairly high leveled. I did it at like maybe level 30 or 31, so not even at the maximum level. So it's not terrible. It requires, you know, a little bit of skill, and obviously it's going to be easier if you have co-op partners, but it's not too terribly hard to do solo. You have to use Death Trap to kill 100 enemies. That is Gage's special ability. You have to get 100 kills in Buzzax Rampage. That is the Psycho special ability, and that was the last trophy I got for the Platinum. And then you simply have to fire the Ludipult, which is in the mines. It's like right behind where Claptrap, the Wizard Claptrap is. So, yeah, overall, it's not a particularly hard Platinum, but it does take quite a bit of time to farm everything out, unless you get insanely lucky. So, do keep that in mind. It is definitely more time-consuming than it needs to be, and it gets quite boring because of that. But, I mean, it, it's an okay game. The game itself and the gameplay is fine. It's just going for the trophies makes it a lot less fun. Next up, we have Pinball Machine 1 from the R Church and Halloween RPG series. I have not done a Breakthrough Arcade game in quite a while because they're all terrible for the most part and are barely even games. But I did do this one because I've done all the other uh, R Church and Halloween RPG games, at least the North American versions so far. So I had to do this one because it's, you know, it's part of the series. You got to do the whole series, you know. So for this Platinum Trophy, it is extremely easy. All you have to do is score a total of 1,000 points in a single game of pinball. You get three balls to do that with, and each target you hit is worth, I think, 25 points. So I think that means you need something like 40 total hits on targets to be able to get the 1,000 points. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit of random chance involved with pinball as to how the ball decides to bounce and if it just decides to go straight through the hole between the flippers if you get unlucky. But as long as you have just a little bit of skill and, you know, just a tiny bit of luck along the way, you should be able to get through this whole thing your first try with no real issues. It did take me until my third ball to get the required number of points. I only had like 500 or so after the second ball. But the good thing is that it's such a quick Platinum that even if you have to do it a second time, it's not really going to set you back that far. This Platinum can be obtained in under a minute. The fastest times, I think, are actually a little bit under 30 seconds. And I could see that being a possibility. My time was like 40-something seconds, and it's not even in the top 50 on PSN Profiles. So take that as you will. It's not quite the fastest Breakthrough Arcade game because of certain other games that have been coming out. They're so-called visual novel type games that are really not because you just hit the X button for five seconds and get the platinum in a few of them. Yes, that's legitimately a way to obtain platinum trophies nowadays. But yeah, that's really all there is to say about this game. I probably spent more time talking about the trophies than I did actually playing the game. And I probably spent more time talking about the trophies than they did making the game. So, the other game I started on this week was A Plague Tale Innocence. This is one I've been meaning to play for quite a while. I've had the Gamefly disc here for a few weeks, but it kept getting pushed back to play, you know, Ghost of Tsushima and Tiny Tina. 
So, I'm liking the game a lot so far. I've only finished three chapters, but I'm definitely liking the game so far. It's, it's very interesting. It's a very different idea for a game dealing with this plague and all the crazy rats and stuff because you start encountering them on the third chapter. So you get a bunch of trophies here just for beating the story. The 16 chapters of the story is going to get you every trophy through here. So that's good that you get a lot of story-related trophies. It's about half the list. You have to find all of the flowers, all the curiosities, and all the gifts. So I want to say there's about 50 or so collectibles in the game overall. So it's not too many. I've missed one so far in Chapter 2, but there is Chapter Select, which is good. You have to fully upgrade the sling and your equipment. So for this one, it just requires collecting upgrade materials throughout the course of your playthrough and using those to upgrade everything. I've done a few upgrades so far, but it's going to take a while to get everything upgraded and it might require a little bit of cleanup in Chapter Select. I uh, don't know how you do this because I haven't been able to craft ammunition yet. This is another kind of type of collectible, but it's tracked separately, and there's five of them. But I think they're all covered in, like, Power Picks' guide. I'm just looking at his text guide, actually, for all this stuff. This is a chapter-specific trophy in the very first chapter. I suspect that this was probably in the second chapter because he comments about being hungry. And I suspect all the other trophies are for later missions and maybe even different endings or something. I'm not sure if there's going to be separate endings or not. But, I mean, the game's a lot of fun so far. Definitely enjoying it. It's not a particularly long platinum. It's like a 15-ish hour platinum as long as you have a collectible guide, which I do. So, I'm looking forward to continuing this. I think it's going to be a good time. And it is actually an auto-pop to the PS5 version, so I'm going to be able to get two Platinums out of this game, which is awesome. Plus that uh, Plague Tale Requiem, I think, comes out this year, either this year or beginning of next year. So, that's cool. Though, is that is that going to be one of the ones that's, like, Xbox exclusive or something? Or am I thinking, I might just be thinking of, like, Hellblade or something, because I think Hellblade 2 is Xbox exclusive. So, level 788, 94%, 23,742 total trophies, 632 platinums, 3,990 golds, 6,306 silvers, 12,814 bronzes. Plans for the upcoming week. I'm going to be working my way through Plague Tale, in a sense. Obviously, that's my current sort of major focus, I guess you could say. Uh, we're going to mention it again, so take another shot if you're keeping track. The Division... Because I just got to mention it again, I didn't really get the chance to play it with anyone this weekend. Like I've said, I'm going back and giving it one last try if I can find people to play it with. Or especially if I could find someone and, you know, pay someone even to carry me through it. Just because I'm that desperate at this point to carry me through survival mode. So if you know anyone or are capable of carrying someone through survival... Uh, and getting that last trophy that I need, please hit me up and I will gladly pay for help with that game because I'm desperate enough at this point. But along with mainly Plague Tale, my next big cleanup game is Black Ops 3. Yes, I am going back to Black Ops 3 next. I need to start playing the game a little bit, getting back into how it plays and learning everything again in it before I really seriously start on the trophy hunting, but I'm hoping to get started on that soon. It's going to be a very long grind to get that platinum. The multiplayer is done, and the zombies is done, actually. Well, not the DLC zombies, but the base game zombies and the multiplayer are completely done, so that at least cuts out probably a couple dozen hours. But it's mostly the campaign stuff. I've beaten the campaign before. I've gotten, you know, some kills with weapons and such. And completed a few challenges along the way, I'm sure. But it, it's going to be a very, very long slog through it. Plus, I'll have to find people for realistic mode. All that kind of stuff. But that's going to be pretty nice to have that one done. Because that's going to be one of my rarest Platinums when I do eventually get it done. And once I get all the DLC done, it'll be even rarer. There's a lot of rare trophies in that game. The DLCs, I'm sure I can find a carry through the Easter eggs. Because... That game is still fairly popular for its Zombies Easter Eggs, for its DLC Zombies, especially compared to like Black Ops 4 and obviously Vanguard and Cold War that were failures in Zombies. Following that, August, even though I doubt I would ever be done with Black Ops 3 anytime soon, my next game will be GTA 5. 
than the Division 2, possibly, unless I just give up on the Division 1. I'm not sure I'm going to want to play the Division 2 after that. Dead on Riptide, though, for the PS4, I will do that at some point for sure because I'm not too worried about that one because most of it is single player and there's just a few, you know, multiplayer trophies that can be knocked out in one to two days, so I'm not too worried about those. And then for the rest of the year, COD Classic, Shadow of the Colossus, Uncharted 3, Conan Exiles, Outer Worlds, and starting a few other old games. As a fun note, though, I am actually now down to only, well... Before I started Plague Tale Innocence, I was down to only 10 incomplete games left on my list, which were The Division, Black Ops 3, GTA 5, COD Classic, Shadow of the Colossus on PS3, Uncharted 3, Hasbro Family Game Night, Homefront, Conan Exiles, and Outer Worlds. So I only had 10 incomplete games left, and it'll be back down to 10 once I finish Plague Tale. And once I eventually finish Black Ops 3, which I know that I am going to be able to get that 100% because people have told me it's not maybe as awful as some people say. It's just more tedious and grinding than anything. So that's kind of good. I'd much rather a tedious grind over something that's legitimately really difficult. So get through that. It'll be down to 9. And there's, of course, a couple games I can't do anything else on. And Uncharted 3, I can never 100%, even though there is a little bit more I can do on it. Maybe I'd even do that sooner just to, like, get it off the list and not have to worry about it anymore and just stop ever mentioning it. Maybe I will do that, actually. Maybe I'll just bump that up and just try to knock it out sooner just so I can stop talking about it. But yeah, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Please like, favorite, share, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell if you haven't already. As for videos and streaming this week, I don't know if I'm really going to be streaming this week because I think I'm going to be kind of busy this weekend. Maybe I'll try to stream something in the middle of the week. It would probably be the rest of that Vanguard challenge run just because I want to get that one done because there's only two missions left, so it probably wouldn't take that long, maybe like one to two hours. So that'd be a good thing to do during the week. And I do still definitely want to do some kind of 12-year anniversary celebration since I didn't really get the chance to because I was so busy and honestly just forgot. But hopefully soon I'll be able to do that. And yeah, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys back here later this week for some more content.